Born into a noble family on the island of Java, Raden Saleh is regarded as a pioneer of modern Indonesian painting. The young prince Raden Saleh received his initial artistic training with a Belgian painter working in Java, Antoine Payen. After winning a scholarship from the Dutch government in 1829, the young Javanese artist settled in The Hague, where he completed his studies with the portrait painter Cornelis Kruisman and the landscapist Andries Skelfhout. He lived in Holland until 1839, receiving private commissions for portraits, seascapes and animal drawings. Raden Soleil was to live and work in Europe for nearly 20 years, establishing a reputation as a portrait and animal painter and receiving commissions from patrons in Holland, Germany, and France. In 1839 he was sent by the Dutch government on a six-month study trip throughout Europe, and eventually settled in Dresden. The four years he spent in Dresden he later recalled as the happiest of his life. Unlike his experiences in conservative Holland, where he was seen as a talented product of the Dutch colonial heritage, in Germany Raden Soleil was regarded as a particularly fascinating, cultured and exotic figure. Moving in refined artistic and social circles, he dressed in Javanese costume and came to enjoy his stature as a sort of oriental painter prince. Catering to the European taste for romantic subjects, Raden Soleil developed a particular reputation for paintings of such exotic oriental subjects as animal hunts. Indeed, he was especially renowned for his depictions of the combat between animals, and between humans and animals, and his paintings of such subjects were highly sought after by collectors. In 1851, after more than 20 years in Europe and at the suggestion of his friend Horace Vernet, Raden Soleil returned to Indonesia, where as the first European trained artist in the country he was soon in demand as a society portrait painter. He received numerous commissions from the Javanese aristocracy and enjoyed a successful and lucrative career as a portrait and landscape painter. He built a mansion on the banks of the Siliwang River in Jakarta and was appointed curator of the art collection of the Dutch colonial administration there. Despite his local success, however, Raden Soleil seems to have missed the heady cultural milieu of Europe. He returned briefly to Germany between 1876 and 1878 but found that tastes had changed, and his work was less fashionable than it had been a quarter of a century earlier. Raden Soleil is rightly associated with the beginning of a new visual approach to Indonesian art. As the first Indonesian painter to study in Europe, he brought a new understanding of visual arts back to his home country, though his work remained deeply rooted in Javanese culture. That connection consistently appears, even if somehow hidden, behind the varnish of his quasi-European iconographies. The goal of this exhibition is to bring a visibility and understanding to his hybrid art, to show that Raden Soleil started a new tradition that was not radically separated from the preceding periods. He felt obliged to a modernization that was both entrenched in a European as well as Javanese tradition. Upon returning, he married a wealthy indo heiress of part German extraction, Constancia von Monsfeld. His new wife financed the construction of Soleil's Landwe or country house on the private domain, Party Coulier land, that the couple had acquired, Sakini. Soleil's house was inspired architecturally by Kallenberg Castle where he had stayed during his European travels circa 1844. Surrounded by vast grounds, most of them were converted into public gardens in 1862, and were closed in the turn of the century. On his first wife's death, Soleil remarried to a young aristocratic woman of Yogyakarta Sultanate, Raden Ayu Danyudurja, in 1867 and subsequently moved to Bogor, where he rented a house near the Bogor Botanical Gardens with a view of Mount Salak. He later took his wife to travel in Europe, visiting countries such as the Netherlands, France, Germany, and Italy. His wife however contracted an illness while in Paris, the exact illness is still not known, and was so severe that they both immediately returned to Bogor. She died on July 31, 1880, following her husband's death three months earlier. On Friday morning, April 23, 1880, Soleil suddenly fell sick. He claimed that he was poisoned by one of his servants, but later examination showed that his blood flow was disrupted due to a clot near his heart. Soleil was buried two days later in Kampung Impang, Bogor. As reported in Javanese Bode newspaper, April 28, 1880, his funeral was attended by various land heron, landlords, and Dutch officials, and even by curious students from nearby school, 